Welcome and thank you for coming. So, uh, there's a story about these two old monks in a monastery. Um, and they had a, a novice come, and his name was Walter. And so, you know, one day the, the two wise monks said to Walter, Let's go across the, around the lake and uh, have a picnic and we'll just talk about what you're learning on this retreat. So the three of them walk around the lake and the, one of the older monks was a little chilly so he walked across the water and got his sweater and walked back. And then a few minutes later the other uh, senior monk said, um, you know I need to get some water so I'm going to just go get something and so he walks across the water and gets his water and walks back so Walter goes hey if these old guys can do it let me try it so he walks into the water and under he goes and the two old monks look at themselves and say um, you think we should tell them where the stones are <laughs> that'll be the theme of tonight. It's about this remarkable man who is showing us where the stones are, rounding them off and polishing them so they're clear and present with the path of the Center for Discovery. So we'll get into that a little bit. So I'm just remember the monk's story. So with that, it's my pleasure to introduce the chairman of the board, Mr. John Milligan. John, John, who lives in Boston, has a frequent flyer thing where he's in the city helping us almost on a weekly basis. So, again, Mr. John Milligan. Well, thank you, Patrick, and, and good evening to everybody. Um, as Patrick noted, it is my honor to serve as the chairman of the board of the Center for Discovery, an organization, in my opinion, that without a doubt is one of the most innovative and highly effective not-for-profit organizations in our country. As most of you know, the center provides advanced care to children and adults with multiple and highly complex medical conditions, including now, which is one of the most prevalent problems in our children, autism. We're conducting groundbreaking research in collaboration with some of the top universities in the country and as such we're developing innovative new models of care almost on a daily basis. The center is truly providing leadership in this field during a time of enormous transformation with our health care situation. Um, the center has embarked upon unprecedented levels of public-private partnerships that have brought external resources to enhance our work and to distinguish us from any other organization caring for those with special needs. Not only is the center nationally recognized for its standard of excellence and high-quality care, but it's very important to note that this care is available to individuals and families from a variety of socioeconomic groups and circumstances, including individuals from across a wide region of the Mid-Hudson Valley, New York metropolitan area, including every borough in New York City. Joining me in this wonderful endeavor is a group of extremely dedicated board members. It's my honor to serve with them and it gives me great pleasure to introduce a number of them to you this evening. I'd first like to introduce Ellen Alamany, last year's honoree. <laughs> Ellen set all kinds of records of support for the center. She just has announced after 37 years her retirement from the banking field and we wish her great luck. And we're going to 
she doesn't really know this, but we're going to pull her into the center a lot more. So, um, Ellen, beware. Um, Nellie Bly Araghetti, who along... <laughs> who along with her husband, Michael, who's seated next to her, were the honorees in 2010. They've generously chaired our Big Barn dinner on an annual basis, and they made the Big Barn possible through their great donations. <laughs> Film producer, namesake of the Karis Institute, generous benefactor, a professional dancer, Janet Karras. <laughs> Joel Foreman, renowned attorney who is joined this never works, it just keeps on clapping. Um, joined by our 2011 honoree, the incomparable Monica Foreman. <laughs> Longtime board trustee, family member, respected educator, Nancy McElroy. <laughs> Nancy, there she is. The ever popular Emmy nominated actor, Aidan Quinn. Ed Sweeney, who's a partner at A.E. Smith Associates. Ed is our newest board member, and he has introduced us to a fabulous group of New York supporters, and we thank him for that. <laughs> Dr. George Todd, who's chairman of the Department of Surgery at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital, and you'll hear a little bit later why he's a major reason for this event happening this evening. Our investment committee chair, Art Thompson, who along with his wife, Denise, <laughs> who along with his wife, Denise, um, and their son, Grant, and they are the visionaries behind our Children's Assessment Center and the Specialty Hospital, which is coming very soon. In my opinion, the Center for Discovery is a, remarkable, a very remarkable community that is first and foremost made up of incredible residents and students who inspire us, their parents and families, many of whom are here with us this evening, who are our partners and, believe me, fierce advocates to make us better, and a dedicated and talented group of administrators and employees, some 1,500 strong. Now, obviously tonight is not possible, this just doesn't happen, without the hard work of some very, very dedicated individuals. And I'd especially like to thank our two benefit co-chairs, whose hard work, talent, professionalism, leadership, and friendship have raised this event to new levels. And that's Monica Foreman and Randy Pom Pomerantz. Our community continues to grow, and it expands, and it evolves for future generations. And recently, this has evolved into the formation of a sibling group, and they call themselves the Discovery Circle. These are people, this, this group is made up of brothers and sisters, families and friends of the center, Many of them here are they're here tonight. They're wearing their Discovery Circle buttons. And I hope you all have the opportunity to visit their kiosk tonight and learn more about their efforts, which includes their goal to create a universal treehouse that will be fully wheelchair accessible, located on the grounds of the center, and a place that everyone, all of us, and everyone can enjoy for generations to come. I would really like them to stand. A very, very special group. Well, tonight you're in for a special treat. You will hear about an extraordinary man of great intellect, heart, and compassion. 
You'll hear the incredible story about what happens when such a man, truly one of America's great generation, greatest generation, comes together with a highly innovative and visionary organization such as the Center. And as you'll see tonight, the results of this incredible partnership are deeply inspiring and really nothing short of magical with the power to transform lives. One of my most inspiring days at the Center for Discovery, and believe me, there have been many, came several weeks ago when I attended a reception bringing together our honoree, Walter Scher, his beautiful and loving family, the administration of the Center, along with a large number of employees, some of whom you'll meet tonight, who have benefited from Walter's sincere generosity. So we look forward to sharing his story with you tonight. So let's get to the main purpose of the event and introduce our honoree. But before we do that, I think the best person to introduce Walter Scher is my good friend, fellow board member, George Tutt. I'm not ready for you yet. Um, <laughs> George is um, one of New York City's most sought after surgeons. As chairman of surgery at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital, he has cared for and saved thousands of people over the years in the highly specialized field of vascular surgery. Many of those people whose lives he saved as their trusted physician have wanted to show their appreciation back to George. These are wonderful people, and believe it or not, George mentions the Center for Discovery. So I'd like to invite him up now to introduce you to the incredible story of our honoree tonight, Walter Scher. Please welcome George Todd. Very well. Thank you, John. It's my privilege to be asked to introduce this evening's honoree. I'm delighted to be given the opportunity to share with you some of the accomplishments of Mr. Walter Scher, the entrepreneur and businessman, and some of the admirable personal characteristics of Mr. Walter Scher, the philanthropist, and Mr. Walter Scher, the humanist. I'd like to take this opportunity to tell you about this remarkable man, about how I came to know about him, and about how it was that he decided to become involved with the Center for Discovery. First, I'd like to tell you a little bit about his life. Walter was born in Ozone Park, Queens, to a family of very limited means during the Depression era of the 1920s. He was in high school when Pearl Harbor was attacked, and upon his graduation, he and a number of his high school buddies went to the local Army recruiting station to enlist. It was during his physical examination that he was pulled from the line of potential recruits and told by an army physician that they feared that he had active tuberculosis. <clears throat> he was immediately taken to a TB sanitarium on Roosevelt Island and placed in quarantine. Now there were no antibiotics to treat tuberculosis at that time and the treatment really consisted of isolation from society and what was called fresh air treatment, meaning basically the patient slept outdoors on a porch even in the dead of winter covered with layers of heavy quilts and blankets. For six years, as a young adult, he was not permitted to leave the sanitarium. He could not have visitors. He could not go home for any holidays. For six years, he was transferred from one institution to another in an effort to cure his tuberculosis. A cure was finally achieved, and he was permitted to leave the sanitarium. Needless to say, it's somewhat difficult to explain a six-year gap in one's resume. And in the late 1940s, there were still no antibiotics yet available to treat tuberculosis. And people were not exactly actively seeking to hire tuberculosis survivors. So Walter found this next phase of his life to be almost as challenging as the previous years. But with his characteristic drive and ambition, he was finally able to secure a job as an entry-level clerk at Sperry Rand and Lytton Industries. Now, Walter moved quickly through the ranks at Sperry. He traveled the world extensively. He established business ventures in numerous European countries, logged more than two million air miles, and ultimately was promoted to a senior executive position 
with responsibility for more than 30,000 employees. His next venture after Sperry was to draw upon his considerable skills as an entrepreneur, an inventor, a manufacturer, and a business leader, and he established the first publicly traded fax machine company in the United States called Panifax. He subsequently went on to found and develop several other multinational businesses, including video library systems, the Cher Smith Corporation, and Vico Instruments. Along the way, he found the time to produce a full-length movie entitled, appropriately enough, uh, Whatever It Takes, which he's very proud of. Walter has a deep sense of commitment to others and a strong desire to give back to help those that are less fortunate. He has founded and serves as chairman of three charitable foundations, including the Vera and Walter Scher Family Foundation. He has also shared his extensive experience, as well as his enthusiasm for learning, by serving as an associate professor of industrial management at several colleges on Long Island. In 2003, 10 years ago, Walter came to me as a patient. He was referred by my brother-in-law, Jack Ryan, who knew Walter from business and had, in fact, succeeded Walter as the chief financial officer of Vico Instruments. Walter had a very serious condition. Accordingly, Walter did some very serious research. He arrived at my office with a four-inch thick binder full of his own readings about his condition. <laughs> it was immediately obvious that Walter had blocked out his entire afternoon for a several-hour discussion about his surgical options. He wanted to discuss his expected outcomes with and without surgery. He brought along life table analysis data, an exhaustive list of potential complications, <laughs> multicolored survival curves, <clears throat> and a history of the treatment of his condition dating back to the ancient Babylonians. <laughs> when he ultimately had all his questions answered and I was thoroughly exhausted, he made his decision, and at that point, he moved ahead without any second thoughts or subsequent discussion. He approached this problem with grace and courage, and fortunately, he came through it all without any issues. He remains well to this day, as we all can see, and for which we're very grateful. <laughs> So when all the drama was over and he returned to my office for a post-operative visit, we sat and talked about various things. I mentioned to Walter that I knew of his impressive record of philanthropy. I asked if he would consider helping us with our dual missions at the Medical Center of Research, as well as the preparation of the next generation of young physicians and surgeons. Walter listened intently and politely. He then immediately said, no, I can't help you with that. <laughs> needless, to say, <laughs> needless to say, I was a little taken back by that. I mean, like, you know, Walter, come on. I mean, you know, <laughs> a, a dude. <laughs> anyway, he then quickly added, however, that he liked to focus his philanthropic activity in a single area. He said, I really like to direct my philanthropy to programs that can help disabled children and adults. I said, I said perhaps I can help you with that. <laughs> so, that's a true story. It's exactly true. So I introduced Walter to Patrick Dollard in, 19, in uh, 2004 and Walter visited the Center for Discovery. He toured the facilities and the campus, met with the staff and the administrators, and personally visited with and spent time with many of the children for whom the Center cares. He quickly embraced the mission of the Center. He immediately made a sizable donation to support its good work. He introduced his children, Laura and Bud and Doug and Robert, to the Center. They, along with Walter and his wife, Sylvia, have become an extraordinarily supportive and committed family unit, working for the benefit of the center. Thank you. Thank you. 
In partnership with Patrick Dollard and the administration of the Center for Discovery, Walter ultimately decided that the best way to make a lasting impact on the future of the center and to raise it to the new level and raise it to a new level was to invest in the training and education of its employees. And so was founded the Walter and Vera Share Continuing Education and Scholarship Program in recognition of Walter and his beloved first wife, Vera Share. The scholarship program is available to any employee to cover the costs of their tuition so that they can obtain a higher education needed to advance their career at the center, as well as provide the center with educated, motivated, and highly qualified staff. Since its inception, the scholarship program has achieved the following. More than 87 students have participated in the program. 18 bachelor degrees, 50 master's degrees, and eight doctoral degrees have been completed to date. Degrees have been awarded in the following areas, 23 special education teachers, 11 nursing degrees, 8 physical therapy, occupational therapy, or speech therapy degrees, and 7 degrees in executive management and business administration. As impressive as those results are, they do not begin to document the significant impact that his support has had on the individual lives of these employees and their families by providing them with a professional career path enhancing their earning potential and improving the quality of their lives and of their families, not only now but well into the future. The team at the Center for Discovery has developed a brief video in which some of the Center's employees can relate to us in their own words what it has meant to them to be provided with the financial resources to enable them to obtain their education and apply it to their work at the Center. We would like to show you that video now. Just to start, I hate a guy that steals my jokes, and that is Patrick. The other myth is and my wife is part of this thing, that I'm jealous of Dr. Todd. <laughs> now, why the hell would I be jealous of Dr. Todd? Yeah, he's a little taller than I am, he's younger than I am, and he saves lives every damn day. What is that to be jealous of the guy about? So I want to take those two myths off the table. The other thing that happened to me before I came up, some dark guy comes up in a suit and big hat, and he says to me, you have five minutes. Well, hold it, hold it. I come from Ozone Park, John Gettys territory. When you tell a guy he has five minutes, he's usually eating a spaghetti dinner, you know what I mean? <laughs> and he, he, you know what? Now, here's the rules of Ozone Park. If the guy's eating a good spaghetti dinner, you can extend it to 15 minutes, all right? <laughs> they, they have rules there, you know? Like, um, it's, uh, it's a little tough there. Growing, growing up, uh, eating stones was not easy, you know what I mean? Well, they give me five minutes and I take five minutes. So I can't tell you the story I was going to tell you about. I made a movie, that's true, in 1983. I went out to Hollywood. I spent time in Hollywood. One day, true story, one night I was on, on the strip having a, uh, a drink, couple of drinks, and it comes in George Clooney, Matt, and Ben, his, his rat tracks. So they sit next to me, and I, I go to George Clooney, and I said, George, I knew your father. Oh, he liked that. That was the true story. <laughs> George's father, I met him down when I was trying to sell something. <laughs> I, I think it was air or something that they didn't, they really didn't buy. But I, but I did meet George's father. He was a great guy. He was in investment banking. This is a true story. I met, I met him and uh, I didn't get any money out of him, but, uh, <laughs> but he was a classy guy. And I told George the story. Well, George and I then became friends. Huh? 
So now George is going to go on holiday, and he says, Walt, come on on holiday. He takes me over to Italy, where he has a villa. What's the name of the town in Italy, Sylvia? Lake Como. Lake Como, yeah. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. What a time we had there, but I can't tell you about it, OK? <laughs> Five minutes, what am I going to do? Okay. Now here's what, here's what. This is an old true story. Here's what. I traveled, as George said, two million miles. One time, I went to South America. This is a new true story, too. <laughs> went to South America. I was, going, I was looking to make a documentary about you know, some native tribes. I took a jeep out one day. I went the wrong way. And I was captured by some Amazon women, big Amazon women. <laughs> well, I mean. <laughs> Now, some people will say I surrendered, but that's not true. <laughs> no, no. That's, a, that's a falsehood, if there's ever a falsehood. That's not true. OK, for you guys now, because I only have five minutes, I can't complete the freaking story. But I did escape after two years. Now, when I tell people's story, they asked me the same question. Why the hell did you escape? And I said, honestly, I don't know why I escaped. Maybe to get back to these guys, Douglas, Bud, and Laura, and Robert. I, well, anyway, I can't tell you that story. I got to <laughs> knock it off. The last time I was with you seven years ago, I told you about my, my grandmother, Grandma McHugh. She was great. We went to her house, as I told you, every Sunday for dinner. And uh, I have to sit down now. <laughs> uh, I'm overwhelmed by talking about Grandma McHugh. No, she's a great, she's a great woman. And, and a number of people got to like the stories about Grandma McHugh, and they used to call me up, and I used to correspond with them from, from seven years ago. And we formed the Grandma McHugh fan club. <laughs> now, what we did is uh, people like the stories, but I can't tell you any story about Grandma McHugh because <laughs> I only have five minutes here. I, uh, <laughs> but, but I'll tell you one thing that happened. Grandma McHugh, we put, on, we put it on uh, web. You can see, you guys got all these iPods and everything. I don't know how to work them, but you got, you got them. <laughs> And if you go grandmamacuirish.com, you'll get Grandma McHugh's stories. <laughs> now, we put one on. Here's I want, I want you guys to remember these three words, OK? We put one story on YouTube. And it was about rushing the growler. I don't know if anybody knows what rushing the growler is. But the thing went viral <laughs> across the country. We got. Well, it was really great. It was rushing the growler, G-R-A-W-L-E-R. -E so I don't think anybody around here, but the people, hundreds of thousands of people visited YouTube, and they loved the story. But I can't tell you what rushing the growler means. <laughs> now, you could go into YouTube and probably get it, OK? So we, we charge a few bucks, and we put it into uh, <laughs> Discovery. So here's where, here's where I am. They asked me, do another, another. Who, who else is a character that you met? I met a great, great guy. He, he was at Grandma McHugh's every Sunday. And he was the local priest, Father Jolly. Of course, he was an Irishman, but that's not, that we didn't help him again. And his job was, this is honestly true, 18 years. I went to my Grandma McHugh's ever. My father was one of the 10 kids, so yeah. 20 or 30 cousins, it was here. And it was the place that's about as big as my living room. <laughs> we see everybody, 40, 50 people there. Grandma McHugh was like a uh, Chicago Bear a linebacker, OK? <laughs> so and she didn't know anybody's name because there's too many kids, huh? <laughs> so she called everybody, hey, you, hey, you. So I went to Kennedy and she asked me about her name. I said, hey, you. I said, oh, but, uh, <laughs> so when, anyway, Grandma McHugh was, was great, but Father Joe, he came, and he had three chores. One was to say the, the prayers before supper, 
We called it supper. Now I guess you call it dining dinner or something. But we, I still call it supper. We, he said the prayers before supper. He then took us kids downstairs. And the, uh, he was a great guy. We, of course, there was only radio in the house. There was no television and stuff like that. And he would tell us stories, uh, uh, spooky stories. And we'd say, put on the lights, put off the lights, put on the lights. Yeah. But we got a little older. He was pretty smart. When we got to 14 or 15 years old, we were still going to grandma's. He'd give us some, some advice, you know. He said, said a couple of things. And, now, this is 70 years, I remember when he says this is true. All, all true. Father Jolly. I, I didn't know Father Jolly's last name, or if that was his first name, but uh, I only knew him as Father Jolly. But he, what he said is, you know, God gave man, his greatest gift was giving man life. And a new baby, of course, is the great. I just became a great, great grandfather for the first time with a little girl. And, and, and the name is Haven. And, and she has, you know, guys, she has revitalized the whole family. It's just, I, I don't know if we talk about anything. We don't even talk about the stock market anymore. We just talk about, <laughs> just talk about Haven. But he, he said a couple other things, Father Joy still remember. He said, look, God created you. He gave you talent. You're going to be held responsible for how you use that talent. That's why I hate George anymore. <laughs> it's because he's, he's, got, he's got an in on me. I was a bookie. You don't know what the hell is a bookie guy does. <laughs> So, the other thing he said, this is very, very important. I stuck my mind when he said it, when I was a kid, I didn't understand it. He said, you know, God created you, and you don't know when, you have no say when you're going to get, when he's going to call you, when he's going to die. So he said to us, you know, what you should do always, think about this, he said. And I didn't get this either. He said, if you died, what is the one thing that you re would regret that you didn't do when you are on earth? He says, think about that all through your life. And it's a good thing for all of us to think about. What would, the, if we died, what would we regret that we didn't do? Would it be that we had a, a, a call with a, a, a brother 10 years ago and we don't even know what the call was about? He had a, he had a, uh, a solution for some things like that. He would say, hey, what you do is pick up the phone, say, I love you, I want to come over and see you, and never go back on what the football was about. That's pretty good advice, huh? So, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm putting uh, uh, together, uh, well, maybe we can incorporate in a uh, club for... Uh, uh, Grandma McHugh. But we might, you might see Father Jolly on YouTube in about a year or so. <laughs> One more thing, I want to sell this though, okay? And I'm writing a book. <laughs> it's true. And it's, uh, it's just the title of the book, and nobody steal this guy because I already registered. <laughs> <laughs> the book is The, uh, the Beds I Slept In. <laughs> this, 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 this is true. This is, this, is, this is true. It's, it depends I slipped in. So it'll be out, and I think, like Christmas, huh? <laughs> 1995 is the price. <laughs> for you guys, I'll autograph the thing for 1995, so we can, we can make some more money here. So when, when you see it now, when you look at the bestseller list, New York Times, uh, Wall Street Journal. <laughs> You're going to see uh, the beds I slept in. Now, I want to talk about Dr. Todd and, and the Center for Discovery. You know, they're one and the same. You see, Jack Ryan is here. He's 
for his father, uh, Dr. Todd's uh, brother-in-law. And we, Jack and I worked together 20, 20 years, more than 20 years, 20 happy years. If you work with Jack, you know what I mean, we're very happy. We traveled the world, we bought and sold a lot of companies. Now one thing that we looked for, that maybe wasn't on the balance sheet or the proper real estate was, did the company have intellectual property? Okay, intellectual property means that they, probably, they, they, they had a patent, Competition couldn't get at it for 17 years. Now, Dr. Todd, how did he get to be have such a great practice? Well, he went to school, and as you know, the people at Discovery are going to school, and we have a lot of doctorates too. Hmm? And he started started to be a surgeon, and then he did thousands of surgeries. Now every surgery he did, he, it was, he, he, he documented what he did. So it's evidence-based practice. If somebody comes into Dr. Thomas, like myself, I, I had an easy surgery, called, he cost me $400,000 he made it. <laughs> I agreed to that price, Patrick, under, under, under sedation. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, so, so that, how, but how did that, so he, he, so when Tony comes in to Dr. Tom, he opens him up, and he knows, he's thousands and thousands of these documented, it's evidence-based practice he has. He looks at it and he says, oh, I know what this is, uh, I've seen it before. He, he gets another guy, he says, ooh, that's a little different than the other guy. I know what I have to do and what I have to do here, okay? And it's, it's, it's not that he's guessing. He's done thousands of surgeries, and he has documentation and evidence for what his theories are. Take it over to discovery. We've been in business... 40 some odd years, whatever it is. Okay? We have doctorates too. We have documented everything we've ever, ever done. So we have evidence based a basis for our practice, just like Dr. Todd. Okay? Now, the difference between Dr. Todd and us and, you know, business is the business doesn't want to tell anybody about the patent, or, or it can't, 17 years is protected. But Dr. Todd, he, he, he saved Walter's life by cloud artery, he took a vein from here and put it here. I don't know how he did it, because he had a martini before the decision. <laughs> he, he says it's two hours is okay. And, and that's it, you know what I mean? So I, I don't know. But, but he, he, uh, he, he did a good job on me anyway. But, but, but he has the, don't see, just to see, but Dr. Todd has the same basis for his treatment that we have at Discovery for our treatment. Now, the, the secrets of business are kept quiet and they don't tell anybody. But Dr. Todd, he, he saved Walter that day, and through the, the medium now of instant explosive news and information you could get, there was some guy maybe in London, London uh, that Dr. Todd has shared the information with that also had been saved his life. Maybe there's another guy in Bangladesh, or India, or Africa, someplace. So when Dr. Todd does the surgery and saves these lives, it's not one, it's multiplying in, in the whole world. Yeah. Because the, uh, the doctors have now uh, a, a system that can, can convey that uh, information worldwide. Now, we at, we at uh, the Center for Discovery have the same basis. 
But when a child comes in, we know, we've seen it before. We know we can do this, we can do that. When another child comes in with something else, we can do this. We can. Why, why do we do it that way? Because we have evidence. We have evidence that we did it. And it, it works. That's what, that's what makes discovery different. That's why we are the number one. Now, what we have to do next is discovery is we have to now do what I did for Grandma McHugh. We have to get it on and get it viral. I'm, I'm serious. Now, now Patrick stole my joke, you know, about the, about the, uh, the monks. I got another joke about the monks. Do, do I have one more minute? Yeah. Okay. Okay. It, it's, I have a joke about the monk. He goes into the monastery and he, it's silent, but he gets three, he gets three uh, words in a year that he can, can say. So his first year comes up and he says, the, the head monk, he says, the head monk says, okay, you can say three words. He says, the bed is hard. And he goes back down for a second year. Yeah, the second year he came, comes up and he said, the food stinks. <laughs> and then he goes down. The third year he comes up, he says, uh, I quit. And the head monk said, you bitched all along. We don't care about if you, been, if you quit or not. <laughs> so, uh, with that, I will say, the Center for Discovery, we have, oh, I wrote a movie I made, it was Whatever It Takes. I did make a movie, as it's true, and it was in 1983, and I did meet George Clooney, I did, I did meet Matt, and I did meet Ben. Now, the only thing I lied about is, I, I didn't want to say, I, I say four years is the, cap, the captain, not two years. Now, I don't want, I would, you know, I, I think people think more of me if I say two years than I say there four years. So, so here's what we're going to do at Sand Discovery. We are going to, in, we're starting to, but in, in five years or so, the things that we do in the center will help children all over the world. We won't, we won't neglect our own, like Dr. Todd Dyson, but, but through the media of, 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 I was going to say television, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, everybody will know what, what these uh, secrets are. We have no secrets. We want to pass our secrets out to the whole world. So children all over the world. So if we help one in Harris, New York, maybe we'll help in one in India. Maybe we'll help in one in France. <laughs> Just one more remark and I'll go. I don't want to get shot, you know, like I would in Ozone Park there. Yeah, five minutes. Five, five, five minutes, all right. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. <laughs> uh, listen, you know what? The, uh, the Center for Discovery, in my mind, I talked to Patrick about it. it, it uh, you know, I always envisioned us becoming a university because we have, we have intellectual property. That's what we have. <laughs> Valuable intellectual property. So I, I, I always thought the center would be, the center would be a university. Now I think what we should do, and here I'm happy to see this. Now, I think we should be called a, a, a nation, the Center for Discovery Nation. Now we have, I have friends all over the place, and some of them are Gator fans, and you know, they, 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 they talk about the Gator Nation. 
No, that means one thing to the football players, one thing to the president, it means the president of the university means one thing to the fans. But it means one thing is universal. It's, it's bigger than themselves. And if you, if you belong to something that's bigger than yourself, you want to make it successful, you want to contribute to it, you want to leave your money to it, you think about it when you die. So I want this to be the center. We want to, I want to call it the center for a na the nation, for the center for the discovery. Thank you. With that, I want to. I, I want to leave. One, one more. I just one more joke, and I'm, I'm off the stage. <laughs> I, I told this seven years ago, I hope you forgot it by now, so I'll tell it again. <laughs> uh, Jesus is up in heaven with uh, St. Peter. And he says, yeah, I say, he says, St. Peter, I want to go out and play golf today. So St. Peter says, okay. So they go out and play golf, and they come to the ninth hole, and it's a water hole. So Jesus says to St. Peter, what club should I use? Oh, he's, he's, you know, Jesus said, what club would Tiger Woods choose? <laughs> so St. Peter says, deny and I am. So Lord takes the, the club and hits, hits the ball, and it goes into the water. Okay. Jesus is walking on the water to, <laughs> get, uh, on the water to get his ball. St. St. Peter's going over the bridge and other golfers come the other way and say, who's that guy walking on water? St. Peter says, that's Jesus Christ, but he thinks he's Tiger Woods. <laughs> next story for everybody as we uh, get this next thing started. Has everybody, were you able to see Walter's hair on the TV? Does he have the most beautiful head of hair on the planet? That's another thing I'm jealous of. What do you want? That's thanks to Dr. Todd. The one thing that George and uh, Walter didn't talk about, which I, I think I should disclose, is that Walter wasn't going to give us any money until he came up and audited the place. And he did all his accounting, and he really worked this over. And I was a little nervous. Claude was nervous in finance. and. But we got through it. But the one thing, he calls me aside and he goes to me, uh, Pat, I need to have a serious conversation with you. I go, what happened? He goes, uh, you need a secession plan. I go, what? He goes, you got to get a secession plan. I go, I'm not, I'm, I'm going to be around for a while. He goes, you need a secession plan. So he still asks me that. I think I have a secession plan, though. Dr. Hamlin, come on up. Now, we're going to, uh, Terry just wants, we're going to just, we want to, we want to acknowledge a couple of people. Uh, as Terry's getting here, could I have a warm round of applause for our Da Vinci wizard himself, Mr. Cesare Casella. Please stand up, Cesare. And, and next to Cesare, which is the Beauty and the Beast tonight. We have Maria Loy, ladies and gentlemen, the best Greek restaurant this side of Athens. So, let me introduce Dr. Terry Hamlin. Thank you. So I cannot believe, Walter, that I have to follow you. All I can say is I will not talk about all the beds I've slept in. That's it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all for being here on this really magical night. Um, what a great job, Richard and Bill and everybody who helped put this event together. And thank you so much, Randy and Monica. I just uh, so much appreciate your efforts. Um, before I um, acknowledge, yep, you should clap. So before I acknowledge and thank Walter, 
Uh, I really want to thank two incredible and spirited moms who are here with us tonight for all of their hard work and unwavering support during this past year. Through their personal commitment and professional expertise, peace, both are helping us begin the transformation that's necessary to sustain our program as we enter even into an even more challenging world for the care of our children. Denise Thompson. <laughs> Through Denise's personal experience, exhausted research efforts, and fierce dedication as a mom, she's helped us envision a new model of care for the very medically fragile. This new model will allow us to provide specialized medical support to someone at the center, even as their condition progresses and they become even more complex. The ability for us not to have to discharge a child to a nursing home or a skilled facility, but instead be able to keep them with us where they live when they are the most fragile helps not just the individual, it helps the entire family, and it helps us. Our entire leadership team, Denise, thanks you. You're a powerful woman. <laughs> Our other mom is Evelyn Rodstein. a highly regarded executive leadership coach who has worked vigorously these past few months recruiting other top leadership trainers like Dr. Peter Cairo, a well-known authority in the world on cor corporate leadership, to help us develop an internal leadership training program that is second to none in the field. All of her high-powered recruits, and there are many, are working pro bono because of Evelyn and her belief in us. She will change the world with her power and grace. We are all excited and looking forward to working with Evelyn this next year. Thank you, Evelyn. And now for Walter. I just want to share with you a quick glimpse into the real life of the senior leadership at the Center for Discovery outside of this fantastic night. It's highly possible that sometime tonight, when everyone is tucked in their bed, I will get a call from Susie or Elise that we have a child in status epilepticus, a brain seizure that's not stopping and perhaps one of our parents in this room will get the same call. Their child is in a life-threatening medical crisis. And then I'll probably update Patrick. We'll say a quick prayer. But we will rely on our highly trained and highly educated and deeply caring staff to do all the right things with precision to save that child's life. We have the appropriate staff because we are able to attract and keep the best with support of Walter and others like Walter, who believe so passionately in us, in our children, and in our mission. Walter has made an educated and responsive workforce not just a dream, but a reality. We are forever grateful to you and your family for your generosity. You have changed lives and you have saved lives. Thank you with all of our heart. Here's some of the uh, hot shots that Terry's talking about and I'm gonna introduce Mr. Gareth Booth who's gonna speak on their behalf. Gareth. waiting for my team. <laughs> uh, 
good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank everyone for coming out tonight and supporting our wonderful organization, Center for Discovery. Uh, this evening, I've been given the opportunity uh, to present on behalf of my colleagues and friends uh, and showing our appreciation to Walter Scher and his family uh, for his remarkable, generous contributions toward enhancing our educational and professional growth. I am thrilled to be standing here uh, with this group of Senate colleagues. Each year, one, a recipient uh, for tuition assistance through Walter Scher Scholarship Program. And there are many more scholars at the Senate tonight. I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Scher uh, a few weeks ago, and I was honored and inspired by his rich personal history shaped by diversity, love, and a unique ability to see the good in every situation. I came to the United States uh, over 13 years ago from beautiful Jamaica. My goal was to continue my educational journey and could only dream at that time of working towards a master's degree. When my family's financial situation uh, tightened, I knew I needed to find a job uh, to continue my educational journey. Uh, at age 19, I was fortunate to be taken into the Center for Discovery's family. And now, more than 10 years later, I'm a father, a loving husband, a leader, a role model for current and future leaders at the Center for Discovery. And I am completing my master's degree and fulfilling my dreams, thanks to the generosity Thanks to the generosity of Walter and his family and my center family. Uh, Walter, you and your family contributions are vital to the continued professional growth and enrichment of our organization's teachers, clinicians, leaders, and staff. You guys all join me in thanking Walter. Thank you. Talking about Denise before, Denise is working on a, all kinds of new methodologies and trying to help me figure out this uh, CON for this assessment center. And she said, you know, you're going to get a call um, and just take the call. And I go, who's it coming from? And I'm blah, 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 blah. She just, it's going to call at 10 o'clock, be in your office. So I get a call, literally, and I, I pick it up and it says, Mr. Dollar? And I go, yes, this is the White House. Well, not, too, not too shabby. Thanks, Denise. I fainted, but I got up, and now we're hustling. And CMS has never met anybody like me. God help them. So that said, it's uh, my honor to bring up, let's, if we could just have a warm round of applause for all of the Sheriff family. We have Doug. We have Bud. We have Laura. Um, Michael, Robert, uh, Sylvia, and friends, and girlfriends, girlfriend, Laura, good, good. And it's my pleasure to introduce, now I've, I've actually told Doug he has actually an hour and a half to talk because he's got to beat his father. Doug Scher. Um, since I'm the oldest in the family with uh, my two brothers and sisters, uh, I'm Doug Scher and uh, my dad is Walter. And, uh, you know, we were thinking just a couple of months back, dad's coming up on his 89th birthday. And uh, pretty, pretty good, right? I mean, <clears throat> and sometimes, and we, 
my brother and I have a business down in Houston, Texas, so we came up from Texas today, and uh, when he comes to visit, I introduce him to everybody down in Texas, even though we grew up on Long Island, and now we work down in Texas. I say, I want you to meet my dad, my 89-year-old dad, and dad will sit there and tell him a story. Whether it's true or not, I don't really know. <laughs> but, and you won't really know either, so there you go, but uh, that's okay. Uh, but I introduce him to my 89-year-old dad, and, um, and they come back to me, and he says, why do you do that? I said, what, Dad? Why do you tell them my age? I said, because you're unbelievable. I said, you know, just the way that you are with people and, um, and how sharp you are and how you remember and how you know what important things are in life and you pick up on that and, and how you use your talents among my brothers and my sisters. And, um, you know, I only regret my mom's not here. With my mom, you know, he tells the stories, but mom gets the work done, you know what I mean? And uh, so we were thinking about his birthday present, and we got together and we said, geez, um, we want to do something. He's coming up on his 89th birthday, and find a way to honor him and my mom, who raised us and on her death a couple years ago, and she was a faithful wife and partner. And we couldn't think of a better way to honor my parents than to come up with something for their famous charity organization. And um, so we put our heads together, and my sister kind of ramrodded it, which she tends to do sometimes in the family, which is great. We need somebody like that. Uh, so we said, we want to do something for the center, but we, we'd like to see the center. We've heard about it for years. and. Um, so we went up. Bud and I were up here for an energy conference, and then uh, we went up to Monticello area there and uh, had a beautiful day at the center. And if you go on a tour with Richard, it is passionate, I'm telling you. And, you know, I, I'm into that. I mean, it is awesome. And, uh, and so we got to see Walter's Way, which is a, the street name for my dad, which is great. And so we came back from there, and um, we wanted to come here tonight to help as a family in support of my dad and my mom to, to make a difference and a contribution here to the Center for Discovery. Um, we were touched. And I can't imagine, and I have three kids myself, but to see these kids striving up there and working one-on-one, -on -one, and now I see what is 1,500 employees you know, and, and the 24-7 that it takes. So, um, yeah, it meant a lot to us. So, on behalf of the entire Sheriff family, it's our pleasure tonight to uh, announce our intention of making a contribution in the amount of $1 million to the Center for Discovery. And what, uh, I, what I will. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But, uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Who's that? What we're going to do with that $1 million and talking it over with Richard and Patrick is they're going to put up a building, and this building is going to be a building named for my mom and dad, Walter and Vera, but it's going to be a learning lab. It's going to be one of the finest, Richard's name, what do you call it, a wave lab. It's like futuristic. It's going to be like the latest technology. But it's going to be where additional training takes place. And um, they're telling me it's going to be kind of a worldly lab. It's going to help kids all over the, all over the world. Um, so this wave, wave learning lab is going to serve as a center for staff education, training, and development to carry on our father's commitment to creating enhanced career opportunities at the center, which you saw the candidates tonight, and ensuring their ability to provide the highest level of care to our residents and our children. So we're pleased to present this facsimile check for $1 million to the president and CEO of the Center for Discovery, Dr. Dollard. All right, here it is, $1 million. I need my brothers and sisters to come up here and get a picture. Come on. 
That's good. Come on, bud. Yeah, if you have five minutes. Uh-oh. Is Walter yelling at me? Uh, folks, I have one more Grandma McHugh story. <laughs> this is as true as uh, God made apples. <laughs> Grandma McHugh loved her beer. Yeah. yeah. And the rushing of the growler that I told you was a metal can with a top and a handle, and she used to say to us, hey you, come over here. I'm serious, hey you, come over here. I said, yes, Grandma. She said, take this up to John, and we knew where the tavern was, so it was two blocks away. Take, take this up to John, knock on the back door, and say, this is for Grandma McHugh. So two of us would go, and we were, and the big thing was John would come out and we'd say, Grandma McHugh, and then we would say, and we can get a Coke too. <laughs> now, Grandma McHugh had a, had a, had a counts payable of her own. You know, counts payable is very important. She had a line. Okay, this is true. She had a line, and she, she had a bills on it, uh, and, and with clipped on with, uh, uh, with what she did the laundry with. And, and guess what? The first bill to be paid was always the bill for the tavern. <laughs> Honestly, that's how she paid the bill. She paid them, and as always, Johnny, uh, John got paid. Now, Grandma McHugh had uh, every, every week in, at that time during the 30s, an insurance man would come around and take 10 cents or 25 cents or a dollar in, in Grandma McHugh's neighborhood, and in my neighborhood too. And I remember the insurance guy, because he was the only guy that ever came around dressed with a tie, so that always impressed me. So now Grandma McHugh has been paying this guy all these years, 20 years, whatever it was, and she dies. At that time, I, I think I was 17 or so, so I could understand things. So I heard the people talking and saying, well, you know, Grandma McHugh, we don't have to worry about, ben, uh, you know, Burying her because she has an insurance policy. My, two of the oldest, my, including my father, go visit the insurance man. He says, I'm a bookie besides an insurance man. She never had a policy. She was paying the horses. <laughs> this is true. Grandma McCoo screwed him in the end, didn't she? <laughs> so... <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, I, I think, what lesson can I learn from Grandma McHugh? How can I screw these guys in the end like Grandma McHugh did? I said, give it away. <laughs> Thank you, folks, for, for being so supportive of our cause. 
you know, um, let me tell you this. Every Sunday night at Grandma McHugh's, Father Jelly, who I spoke about, this is true. We could not go home to Uncle John saying it's a shanty in old shanty town. And then we had to wait for Father Jolly to give his blessing. And he used to say, you know, may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be upon your back. May the sun shine on your face gently. May you be poor in misfortune, but rich in blessings. May you, your, may the ones that love you always be true. May you live to see your children's children. Until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hands. Thank you. So, uh, Walter handed me an envelope, so I have to read it. Uh, Walter just wanted me to announce to everybody he's, for his 90th birthday year, he's going to give us $900,000 in addition to the million dollars. I really came up to say, I, I want to say a couple of words about Dr. Todd. <laughs> but my jealousy gets in the way and I can. <laughs> it's terrible to be jealous of another individual, isn't it? What has he got? He says he saves lives every day. It's just, it, it really gets to me. You know? <laughs> And it hurts me when my family compare and say, well, you're great, but look at Dr. Todd. <laughs> Once I was out on a golf course with Dr. Todd, and I said to myself, you, you should do some of the tricks you learned from the Amazon girls <laughs> and bring this guy to his knees. The Blessed Mother appeared to me. She said, we need Dr. Todd. Well, gosh, when, once the Blessed Mother was on the side, what the hell am I going to do? So I let him hit the ball. The only good thing is he hit it into the rough. That was the only thing. But, folks, we do have a mission here. And we want to multiply the mission by a great deal, by 10 times. There's no reason that we have all these secrets, all this intellectual property. We, we have an obligation, like Dr. Todd does every day. 
We have documented everything. We've done this over 40 years. It's evidence-based. That means it works. We know what works and we know what doesn't work. So please keep supporting us. You know, a, a few prayers would not be out of the order. For the people that work here, for our loving children, for our management, for our board of directors who give their time and effort. And if you want to pray for me, it's okay too. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the world-renowned Mr. Guy Bennett. Hi. Oh. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And welcome to this evening's live auction, which will be brief. I was given five minutes also, but I've now been told it's a minute 37 seconds. <laughs> Before I begin, I have two or three sale room announcements. I don't need to remind you to bid as aggressively as possible this evening. There are five lots. It is a short sale. So don't be shy. Charge your glasses. Drink heavily. It will make it a lot easier. Many of you have seen me take auctions here and other places before. I don't need to explain how it works. Just raise your paddle at each lot and I'll tell you when to put it down. With that said and done, we will begin with lot one. Shh. <laughs> lot one, the wine lovers, this is Francis Ford Coppola's extravaganza. It includes a three liter bottle of Francis Coppola's 100% reserve. It includes a one year membership, a family membership. This is Progressive Drinking Club. <laughs> to their wine club, what a family membership. I'm English, I should love this. Quarterly shipments of their limited production, four to eight bottles in the shipment. Wine discounts, you get to use the poolside when you're there and visiting. Dinner for four at a rustic, at the rustic, which is on the winery. The Godfather trilogy, and it also includes two shh, round trip trips on Virgin America. So we'll start the bidding here at $2,000 at 2,000. Who will raise their hands at $2,000? I'm looking for 2,000. I see you at 2,000. Thank you very much. At 2,000, 2,500. At 2,500, will you keep going, sir? At $2,500. Where have you gone? There we have a new bidder now at 3,000. 3,500, I took it with you, madam. It's not yours, madam. Will you give me 4,000? 4,000. Where are you, madam? You're hiding from me. It's at 4,000 with a lady. It's not yours. You're looking lost. It's really simple, you just raise your paddle again, and you don't need to ask him. At $4,000, it's with you, madam, I see you. At $4,000, are you bidding, madam? There's two of you in a line, I took it here with a lady at $4,500, sir. Now's your chance to come back at $5,000. $5,000, madam, table six, will you give me 50, yes. Again, you don't need to ask him, $5,500. He knows he's not going to get consulted. Don't pretend for the table you're going to ask him. At $5,500, it's against you, sir, at the back. It's already yours, madam, but you like to bid again against yourself. 6000 she's eager, she'll keep going. No, now you have to bid. So it's 6000 it's not yours, madam. <laughs> you're getting it now. 6500 Sir, she's a novice. She might keep going. 7000 At $7,000, he's bidding now, $7,500, maybe he is in charge. At $7,500, it's not yours, sir, right at the back, and it's not yours, madam, or yours, at $7,500, one more, at $8,000, now you're $8,500, let's get to ten. at $8,500, it's not yours, sir. Now you are hiding from me. 
at 8,500. Table six. Are we all? 9,000. Will you give me 10, sir? It's at 9,000. It's not yours, sir. You're going to have to go home in the ca 10,000. At $10,000, it's with table six, it's against the two of you. Madam, are you coming back? At $10,000, that's dangerous, celebrating before you bought it. That's almost a bid. Next time you do that, you're bidding. At $10,000, it's not your sir in the back. Last chance, fair warning, and selling to you and madam for $10,000. Thousand dollars. Yours for ten thousand. Table six. Now you can celebrate. You know what they say, sir. Make sure you bring enough for everyone. <laughs> All right. Lot two. Shh. This is the private dinner with Chef Maria Loy at the best Greek restaurant this side and the other side of Athens. I've been there. It's fantastic. It's an intimate dinner for eighteen in the chef's room at the Loy restaurant on Manhattan's Upper West Side. It is there is a piano playing by Academy and Granny award-winning David Shire and guest appearance by Didi Kong, Greece's own, very own Frenchie. And I can start the bidding here again at $2,000. At $2,000. Who's going to raise their hand at $2,000? Surely someone will raise... I see you, madam, there. 2,500, it's yours. At 25, it's not yours now, madam. It's here at $2,500. Lift 3,000. At $3,000. Do the math. Divide that by the 3,500. New bidder. At $3,500. It's against the three of you. 4,000. Another new bidder. At 4,000. Where have you gone? I've lost you. Raise your hand again. Where were you bidding? Oh, he almost fell for it. At $4,000. It's against you all. It's here at $4,000. Listen, there's no alcohol in... $4,500. Thank you, madam. You're back at $4,500. $5,000. Far left at $5,000. Shh. I'll give you time, madam. You can take the whole table... At $5,000. Madam, look at me. <laughs> Thank you. How about this? There's no alcohol involved. If I gift... I haven't even offered it and you're bidding. $5,500. <laughs> Shall I make the offer now? I will throw in a case of... Hmm. I'll throw in half a case of Latour to start the ball rolling. 2004-ish. That's worth more than the bid. So you can sell it and come out whole at 6,000. Thank you, madam. Smart one in the room. At $6,000, which includes dinner for 18 and half a case of Chateau Le Tour. Would it also help someone if I threw in a bottle of Ikem dessert wine? That's at 6,000. It's with you, madam. You can bid again if you want to, just to get the Akem. She's thinking about it. At $6,000, 6500 At $6,500, a dinner for 18, half a case of Latour, a bottle of Akem, and 7000 What about some champagne to start the evening? 7500 I haven't told you what champagne it is yet. $7,500. We're throwing a couple of magnums of Dom Perignon. At $7,500. Dinner for 18 and a lot of wine. <laughs> Last 8000 Now I'm out of wine and champagne. I'm hoping you'll keep bidding though. At $8,000 then, last chance. $8,500. Let's keep going, sir. At $8,500 then, last chance. Fair warning. 
9,000, 10,000, and you bid her at 10,000. At 10,000, keep your hand up. You keep, it's not yours, it's with a gentleman at 10,000. Will you give me 11? Last chance then, fair warning, and selling to you, sir, for 10, 11,000. I'll stare at you all night, sir. 12,000. Madam, I'll stare at you all night. You're a lot easier on the eyes than the gentleman over here. <laughs> at $11,000, surely one more bid. 12,000. You did that last time. $12,000 then, last chance, fair warning, and selling to you, madam, for $12,000. $1,000. Thank you very much. <laughs> lot three. Two more lots to go. Lot three. This is called Europe, Here I Come. It's an opportunity to spend a week in London and a week in Paris. You get to spend a week in London at a Mayfair flat just off on Park Street, which I can tell you is right behind the American Embassy. It is managed by the Marriott, so it can be full service if you want to. It's within walking distance of many restaurants. I can see this is going to cost me something as well, being from England. We'll see. Theatre District, also a week in a prestigious new Paris apartment in the 8th on Avenue Friedland, which is a stone's throw from the Arc de Triomphe and the Champs Elysees. You can combine the weeks or use them separately. And I can start here at $2,000. At $2,000. Who's going to raise it? $2,000, $2,500. 3,000, 3,500. It's your go, 4,000. Don't let me down at 4,000, 4,500. 4,500, I took here at 45. Madam, it's not yours. At 45, is that a bid? 5,000, I took here, 5,500. 6,000, she's back, 6,500. At 65, keep going. Your husband's on the other side of the table. Big mistake, you should have sat next to her. 7,000, 7,500. At 7,500, it's over here on my right. At 7,500 dollars, 8,000, 8,500. At 8,500, now he's got your paddle, sir. It's been passed around the table. At 8,500, it's not yours, sir. Will you give me 9,000? At 8,500 dollars, are you sure? 9,000, 9,500, 10,000. We got an auction. 11. 12, 13. Did you just swear at me? <laughs> what, we have a negotiation going on now? Will Walter go with you? I might have to bring him on stage though. <laughs> at at $13,000, it's here with a gentleman. It will. Sure he'll come with you, madam. Sure. Trust the auctioneer. <laughs> 13, 14, 15. Stop swearing. It's not going to help. Just raise your paddle. It's a lot easier. At $15,000. It's not yours, madam. Two weeks. Paris, London. You can go together. 16, 17. Wow. That's $17,000. What do we do, she says. I think you keep going. That's seven. At $17,000, it's not yours, madam. It's with a gentleman. I will sell this. You sure? You'll regret this. At $17,000, last chance, fair warning, and selling to you, sir, for $17,000. Thank you very much. This is lot four. These are two tickets. Two tickets, shh, I've only got two more things to sell. Two tickets to Super Bowl 48. 
But what makes these unique, these are directly from the NFL networks. They're great seats. And this year, the Super Bowl is in New Jersey. February 2nd, 2014, just round the corner. Two. Here, 10 minutes away. Best seats in the house. <laughs> Shh. And I can start this at, sir, where would you like to start this? 5,000, thank you very much, sir. At $5,000 straight away. He means business, let someone take him on. At $5,000, six. Don't let me down, sir. Seven. Eight. Is that a bid? Eight thousand, right here. Two tickets to the Super Bowl. On our, at eight thousand dollars then. Are we all done? Nine thousand. Ten thousand. It's here, 10,000. On my far left, against you, sir, on table 34, I believe. At 10,000. Will you give me 11? 11. You're making me work tonight from wing to wing at $11,000. 12. Sir, this is, you're running out of lots. You tried with lot one. This is your last chance. At 13,000. Shh. $13,000. 14. At 14,000, 15. At 15,000, sir, would it help if I promised your team will be there? <laughs> At $15,000, last chance then, fair warning, and selling here. <laughs> I feel like I'm directing planes. Last chance, fair warning, and selling far right for $15,000. Thank you very much, and a round of applause. And the final lot of the evening. This is the HBO after party after the Emmys. Did I say that right? September 26, 2013. Admission for two people. Must be 21 years to attend. Years old. Shh. And again, $2,000 to start this. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. $2,000. Thank you, madam. At $2,000. Who will take her on? At $2,000. I will give these away. At $2,500. Don't look frustrated, madam. $3,000. Again, at the wings. At $3,000. $3,500. $4,000. At 4,000, I took it here on the right. No, it's yours, madam. I took it with you at 4,000. Get someone at your table, I think. 4,500, this is ugly. It's all at the same table now. Stare her down, madam. At 4,500, this is the last lot of the night. 5,000, I took it here. At 5,500. 5, 6,000. <laughs> 7,000. Madam, stay focused. <laughs> it's a lot of money. It's at 7,000 here. 7,500. It's not yours, it's here now, the lady in the red. At $7,500, it's here. Do it. Come on, do it. <laughs> I was going to make a very inappropriate. 8,000, 8,500, a new bidder. It's now with a gentleman, 9,000, 95. At 9,500, 10,000, 11. 11,000 with a gentleman. Against you, madam, and against the table over there. Where am I? 11,000? Is that what I said? $11,000. you give me 12? I'm selling it then. Last chance. Fair warning. 
12,000. I'll give you the time as well, sir, to think about it. You don't need any time, you're just going to bid. No. At $12,000, no, 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 it's with the lady in red, it's not with him. Wow, no more alcohol. At $12,000, it's with the lady, but you're going to let her down, sir, now. She thought you bought them. Last chance then, fair warning, and selling here at $12,000. Thank you, madam, at $12,000. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I need, shh, I need one more minute of your time. We've seen enormous generosity this evening, not only all of you, but from the Share family. And we've seen images of the Walter and Vera Share Learning Lab. And, in, and what I'm going to try and do is see if we can have an immediate impact on that Learning Lab and the employee scholarship support. I'm not going to lie here. I'm going backwards. There are three different opportunities. It's an honor system here. If you do raise your paddle or you use those machines, I got you, I know. If you do use those machines, you're going to plug it in and we're going, to try and we're going to try and raise some money here. But if you don't have a phone, then raise your hand the old-fashioned way. <laughs> so I'm going to ask here, I'm going backwards, but I've got to ask, is there anyone that would be prepared to raise their hand? You've been all incredibly generous, but let's just see if we can do it one more time. Would anyone raise their hand at $25,000 or use those machines? And if you do, it will appear there. But you can plug them in now, you can do it all anonymously, or you can raise your hand. Has we got anyone in there? I like the old-fashioned way, someone puts their hand in the air. I'm doing this, I'm at 25,000, is there anyone? I'm sure there's lots of people, it's just not working at the moment. <laughs> at 25, now I'm going to go backwards. I'm going to ask you to plug those things in at 10,000. Do we have anyone? At 10,000, is this machine working? I have one person, at what number is that? 25,000, thank you very much, madam. And a round of applause. Thank you very much. 10,000, by the way, is a scholarship to sponsor a nurse or anyone working there. So is there anyone that will raise their hand or plug in the numbers at 10,000? I have one person. Thank you very much, madam. A round of applause. Is that another person? No? I have another one. You're waving your phone at me. I get it. That's two people. That's two people at 10,000. Do we have anyone else at 10,000? Now I'm going to go back, and this is really simple. We're doing $1,000. $1,000, plug it in. I have one, thank you very much, madam, or use your phone. Two, thank you very much. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thank you, thirteen. 13 people, 14, 15, 16. That's 16,000. Anyone else? I'll close this at 16000 That's fantastic. That's over $50,000. Last chance then, 17. Thank you very much, sir. Last chance, fair warning. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the evening. I will be less than five minutes. Um, the bidding for the silent auction, if you would please stop by on your way out and uh, obviously pay for your purchases. Uh, my thanks to our auctioneer and my many thanks to all of you and one more rousing standing ovation to the Walter Share family.